This AI plant identifier app made more than $5 million last month. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it completely using AI. We're going to be working with ChatGPT Codex. I'm going to show you the best way to start working with it on iOS, how to build with it and design, and finally create a fully working iOS app inside Xcode. Here is the app that we're going to be recreating today. This is an AI app that lets you take a picture of a plant. And here is the clone app that we created. Now, if you go inside Google and find a picture of a plant and then take the picture over here it's going to be able to identify the image and then finally will be able to give us all the results of that plant and here it is we took the picture of the plant and now we have all the information of this specific plant that we took now let's go and build this app the first thing you want to do is to open xcode and click create new project make sure to select ios and select app and then click next and over here for your product name you could write anything in my case i'm going to write plant identity fire and for the rest of the settings here it can stay all the same just make sure that the interface is set as swift ui and then the language as swift and then click next and over here find the folder where you want to save your project in my case i'm going to save it under youtube and now you have a brand new xcode project so the next thing you want to do is to go and install chat gpt codex if you don't have it already then all you can do is just write chat gpt codex install on google and just click the first link and over here you have two ways to install it either with npm or with homebrew i suggest using homebrew and if you don't have homebrew installed then just find how to install homebrew and then just do brew install codex so after you have codex installed what you want to do is to cd or navigate inside that project that new xcode project that you just created so in my case i'm going to cd into developer and then slash youtube and if i do ls then i can see my plant uh, i wrote pant identifier but it's okay the name doesn't really matter over here so let's just cd into plant identifier and then do ls again and over here we see two things one the plant identifier xcode project and one the plant identifier identifier folder where we have all of our important files so what we want to do is to navigate inside the next plant identifier folder which over here lives all of our important code so you want to make sure to run codex inside this folder and not the parent folder this is all the code that we want to work with we don't need to work with the xcode project so you want to write codex and over here it's saying uh, do you want to allow codex to work with this folder so you want to say yes in my case i'm already signed in so i didn't have to do all the signing in process but if it's your first time using codex then probably asked you to sign in and it just had to sign in using the web browser okay cool so we have our codex okay cool so we have chat gpt codex open for our project now the next thing you want to do is to create an agents.md file essentially it's a file that would guide codex on how to behave and in our case we want it to behave to write proper code so this this is what we can write create an agents dot md file that specifies that you are working in a ios swift ui project make the ai behave like a senior software engineer that writes good code and build good designs okay so this is pretty much what we need for agents.md file so you don't really have to worry too much about this we're just putting everything in plain english and codex will take care of creating the entire file with the specific specifics that we need so you want to press enter so now codex just created the agents.md file and over here as you can see it created a lot of guidelines like the best way to code the best way to design the app so now every single time that you work with codex it will first read agents.md and follow all the guidelines so then you can have some good code and some really nice designs inside your app so now that this is taken care of we can start coding with chat gpt codex and this is how i work with ai every single time i create a new project i start focusing on the design so I'm not talking about making the app look really nice with bright colors and fancy graphics. I'm more talking about the user interactions and making sure that I have all the elements, all the super important blocks inside my app. And then when I have the AI build me all the UI and the interactions that I want, then I can focus on the logic and doing all the AI implementation and all the business logic. So let's start writing this for a plant identifier. Let's say build me a plant identifier identifier app that can identify plants by the user taking a picture make this 
a two page app. The first page is the page that opens when the app starts. It's a camera view that lets the user take a picture. The second page is a details page where I can see all the details of the identified plan. The idea over here is for the first page to take a picture and then send it to an AI to identify the image. And then the information along with the picture is sent to the details page. Focus only on the UX and interactions. Do not implement any logic. Keep it simple. Okay, so we have our prompt over here. Just to summarize everything, we want the AI to focus only on the UX UX and the user interactions and we're just saying it to keep it simple in our case we have a plant identifier app and we're saying that we want only two pages one page to take a picture and the other page to identify the plant and see all of its details so let's send this prompt and see what codex builds for us it looks like codex finished coding its work as you can see over here we have the preview and it's showing a sort of a camera view over here and we have another file over here and I feel like this is probably the details page yes this is a details view so now what I want to do is to run this on my iPhone because it is a camera app so we can't really work with the preview over here or with the simulator. So the best thing to do is to work with an iPhone so just make sure that you have your iPhone connected and then find your iPhone over here inside devices and then run it on your iPhone. So here is the app if I use it on my iPhone nothing really works. I press the button and now it went into a details page but I can't really take a picture it's just a black screen. So essentially Codex followed what I told it it created the UI but it didn't implement any logic or any super important things. So the next thing we can do is to ask Codex to implement the camera so that we can see the camera view over here. So then if we take a picture, it should send it to the details page. Great, now implement the camera because right now it's only a black screen. ChatGPT Codex is working on implementing the camera view. Nice, it looks like Codex finished its work. Now let's go into Xcode and see what's happening. It looks like we have a lot of errors errors yeah let's ask codex to fix the errors i'm not sure if it's going to work just like that by just asking codex to fix the errors but if it does not then we'll have to take screenshots and send it to codex i have a lot of errors inside my project fix them all so let's see if codex can fix the errors just like that yeah i don't think it fixed the errors so let's just take screenshots so i'll take a screenshot over here take the entire thing not my face now let's send it to codex and say here is the error fix it okay so it just imported a new library combine it looks like the error disappeared let's see let's build it by doing command b okay there is another error let's also take screenshots for these ones take a screenshot and now send it to codex also these error so this is the thing with ai i'll write code but in the end you have to build it you have to test it and if there is any errors you have to tell the ai to go and fix it okay so it fixed the other errors now let's do command b let's see if it's building okay build succeed now let's run it on my iphone unlock my iphone to continue okay so the app just crashed it's saying over here this app has crashed because it attempted to access privacy sensitive data without a user's description the app's info plist must contain an ns camera usage description key with a string value explaining to the user how the app uses this data okay i see what it's saying essentially it's saying that if you build an app that needs the camera then you need to ask for the camera permission so i'm not sure if you noticed but whenever you download a new app and this new app needs permission for your camera or your photo library then you get a sort of pop-up asking you to accept or deny the permission so in this case we need the same we need to add this key inside the info plist so then we can have the same pop-up and we need that because in this app we are using the camera so what you want to do is to click on your main project and then go inside info so over here you want to click this plus button on the last item it's very small so i don't think you can see it well but this is what you want to click and then you want to paste in this 
text over here and this camera usage description and then press enter and then over here you need a message on the reason why you need the camera permission so over here we could say to be able to identify plants and that is it now if you run the app again hopefully this time it should work so now the app is running now if i show it to you guys we can see the pop-up that we're used to seeing and over here is saying a plant identifier would like to access the camera and then our reason to be able to identify plants and over here we can allow or not allow and in our case we definitely want to allow so if you do allow what happens now we can actually see the camera view so this is looking great we have the camera working as expected we can see myself inside my monitor if i take a picture what happens it doesn't send a picture but at least it did what we said it created the camera view inside our first page okay great now that we have that the next thing we want to do is to go and implement the entire magic inside this application so we have our camera view we can take a picture and now what we want to do is to take this picture the picture of the plant and then send it to an ai and then this ai should process the image identify the plant and then give us all the descriptions of that plant so there is a lot of ai models out there that can do the job but in this case we're going to be using google gemini because it's fast and it works but more importantly it's free it's free for testing it's free for a couple of requests here and there but when you're ready to publish your app and you have many many users then you're going to be asked to pay but for now we can test it all for free so let's go into our terminal and say great now implement the ai processing and i identifying using google gemini 2.5 flash the image will be sent to the ai model and then sent back with all the details of the plant that will be displayed on the details page along with the image we took let's send this prompt okay so after 10 minutes of coding it finally finished its work it did a lot of things now over here it's saying that it added a camera service and then added a new plant service so a lot of different things and over here it's saying that we have to configure something it's saying that i have to add the gemini api key inside my info.plist so the same info.plist that we worked before now we want to add something else inside so essentially this gemini api key is the key that you need to be able to call the google ai apis so let's go and add this inside info.plist and then for the value we need to go inside google ai studio so write google ai studio and then go on the first link then over here you want to go at the bottom on the left side and click on get api key and then over here you could create a new api key by clicking the create api key over here on the top right corner and then you could name your api key whatever you want so in our case let's write plant identifier and then select a cloud project let's create a new cloud project create project plant identifier create project and then we want to finally click create key nice so we have a new key created now we want to click on this new key over here and then copy paste the new key and then send it inside our info.plist so now we have gemini api key and then the value the new key we just pasted now let's try to run this app inside our iphone okay again we have a lot of different issues i feel like it's again the combine issue that it fixed before so let's try it out let's write import combine this is probably the only line of code that we'll mainly have to write let's see okay it looks like it fixed the error so if you have a similar error like this one where it's saying that there's a lot of combine issues then just write this import combine or if not just take a picture and then send it inside codex so now i'll try to run my app build succeeded okay now let's go and test that out let's go on google and write plant or something so we have a picture over here as you can see in Inside the view now let's take the picture if i take the picture over here let's see what happens loading for now hopefully it will process the image and then give me all its details okay cool so we got some information back we got that it's a golden potos and then i'm sure there's a lot of description over here but i can't really read it it's all white the text is white and the background is white so there's an issue over here but the cool thing is that we see that everything is working we took a picture of that plant and then it gave us back the information now what we can do is just take a picture of all this information over here and just say that the ui is not the best so i'm going to take this picture and then send it back inside codex and say great it works but the details view looks weird i cannot read the text over here the 
backgrounds are white and the texts are white fix this also what is this also what is this what is the name what is this text over here i don't even know is it is it just like a placeholder text or is that the name in latin or is that the original name i don't know so let's say fix this and also what is this make it more obvious on what it is okay let's send this prompt and hopefully now we should have a beautiful details page that explains everything to us with all its details and that we can actually read now it's working through the prompt uh, I see it's the scientific name. It's saying labeling the scientific name. All right, it's finished. Now it's saying that the details page now respects dark mode. All stat blocks use as color and blah, 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 blah. Essentially, it's saying that now the details page should look a lot nicer. So let's go back inside Xcode. Click the run button. Build succeeded. Quick time player. Let's see the iPhone. Okay, so we have the camera view again. Now let's go on Google and take the same picture of the plant. And then hopefully now we should able to see the new details page so let me take a picture it's identifying now hopefully on the details page we'll be able to read everything we should be able to see the details page cool so here is the details page and now we can read everything and we even have the scientific name over here that's the 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 text that i can't really read and we have all the details for this plant and we have the family the native region the light that it needs the water that it needs and all the different checklists on how to care for this plant and we even have this confidence score over here that is saying that's 95 percent confident that it is this plant that it identified so here it is your own plant identifier app we created everything in chat gpt codex and a couple of prompts and as you can see everything is working perfectly we can take a picture of a plant and then send it to google gemini and then receive all the information for that plant it's able to identify the plant and it gives us all the information we need for that plant thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one